Hey, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining in again. Another Kingdom uh, episode. And we're going to talk today a little bit about kingdom culture um, and how the culture of the kingdom of God brings to us a set of morals and standards that we live by. Uh, things that are the standards that are high. You know, they're set by the king. They're, they're moral standards that cause us to live really wonderful and beautiful lives if we're willing to submit ourselves to them and to who he is. Uh, this means that you and I, right, we have a code of morals and standards uh, that are handed down to us by the king. Um, and think, so think about this. This being Pride Month, right? Pride in what? Well, what we're being told is we should be proud of people who are engaging in a sinful way of living that they know and we know isn't the best for them. And so we're saying, well, you know, that's not the moral standard of the culture of the king. It doesn't live up to it. So what, you know, in fact, the Bible says to, that God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. So maybe we would encourage everybody to come up with a humble month. You know what I mean? Um, something else. But, you know, when we think about that kind of stuff, those kinds of things, it's up to us, God's people, to be okay with saying, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to support that. I love you. And if that's what you want to do. Fine. Um, but if you ever come and talk to me, I'm going to give you the truth of the good news of Jesus Christ. But I'm not going to support that. Here's something interesting. Uh, five Major League Baseball players of the Tampa Bay, Florida uh, uh, Rays uh, decided they were not going to participate in that as a team. Everybody had to wear a certain rainbow sticker on their hats and on their clothes. And these guys said, listen, we can't support that because we come from a kingdom culture that has morals and standards, and that's not ours. Those may be yours, but it's not ours, and we have to say no to that. Isn't that interesting that more and more people are saying the dividing line right now is becoming so obvious and clear. You are either for the light or you're for the darkness. You're either for God or you're not. And it, it, there's no more shadows and no more shadowy places people can hide. You have to make your choice for the king. It has to happen in this day and season. So we're going to see more and more of that. And so our culture, it's okay for us to stand up and say, no, that's not right. Actually, God has something way better for you. This is a counterfeit that the devil's brought to you. you may, yeah, you bought it and the world is going for it, but it's not the truth. And let me tell you something. These are not identities. All these letters, L, G, B, T, Q, now a plus sign. These are not identities. They're not. They're not. God has an identity for every person. He's the only one who has it. And he wants to give it to us and call us who we are and introduce us to who we are as we get to know him. So as we begin to see this, um, let's let the light shine. You know, we're the answer. We're the only ones who can do it. And I'll tell you right now, people are really looking for something uh, they're looking for God. They're looking for the light to be shown to them because uh, make no mistake, when you're grasping on things that are lies, you're slipping off and falling into a place you don't want to be. And that's where a lot of people are today. So let your light shine. There's nobody else but Christ. And Jesus said, nobody comes to the Father except through me. Let your light shine in love, but don't be run over like a train. Hey, be blessed and we'll talk to you soon. 